Tonight, tonight, we've reached a milestone in our nation's march toward a more perfect union. The first time that a major party has nominated a woman for president. Standing here, standing here as my mother's daughter and my daughter's mother, I'm so happy this day has come. I'm happy for grandmothers and little girls and everyone in between. I'm happy for boys and men, because when any barrier falls in America, it clears the way for everyone. After all, when there are no ceilings, the sky's the limit. So let's keep going. Let's keep going until every one of the 161 million women and girls across America has the opportunity she deserves to have. Even more important than the history we make tonight is the history we will write together in the years ahead. Let's begin with what we're going to do to help working people in our country get ahead and stay ahead. Now, I don't think President Obama and Vice President Biden get the credit they deserve for saving us from the worst economic crisis of our lifetimes. Our economy is so much stronger than when they took office. Nearly 15 million new private sector jobs, 20 million more Americans with health insurance, and an auto industry that just had its best year ever. Now, that's real progress. But none of us can be satisfied with the status quo, not by a long shot. We're still facing deep-seated problems that developed long before the recession and have stayed with us through the recovery. I've gone around the country talking to working families, and I've heard from many who feel like the economy sure isn't working for them. Some of you are frustrated, even furious. And you know what? You're right. It's not yet working the way it should. Americans are willing to work and work hard. But right now, an awful lot of people feel there is less and less respect for the work they do, and less respect for them, period. Democrats, we are the party of working people. <clears throat> We haven't done a good enough job showing we get what you're going through, and we're going to do something to help. So tonight, I want to tell you how we will empower Americans to live better lives. My primary mission as president will be to create more opportunity and more good jobs with rising wages right here in the United States. From my first day in office to my last, especially in places that for too long have been left out and left behind, from our inner cities to our small towns, from Indian country to coal country, from communities ravaged by addiction to regions hollowed out by plant closures. And here's what I believe. I believe America thrives when the middle class thrives. I believe our economy isn't working the way it should because our democracy isn't working the way it should. <clears throat> That's why 
We need to appoint Supreme Court justices who will get money out of politics and expand voting rights, not restrict them. And if necessary, we will pass a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United. American corporations that have gotten so much from our country should be just as patriotic in return. Many of them are, but too many aren't. It's wrong to take tax breaks with one hand and give out pink slips with the other. And I believe Wall Street can never, ever be allowed to wreck Main Street again. And I believe in science. <laughs> I believe climate change is real and that we can save our planet while creating millions of good-paying clean energy jobs. I believe that when we have millions of hard-working immigrants contributing to our economy, it would be self-defeating and inhumane to try to kick them out. Comprehensive immigration reform will grow our economy and keep families together, and it's the right thing to do. So, whatever party you belong to, or if you belong to no party at all, if you share these beliefs, this is your campaign. If you believe that companies should share profits, not pad executive bonuses, join us. If you believe the minimum wage should be a living wage and no one working full time should have to raise their children in poverty, join us. If you believe that every man, woman, and child in America has the right to affordable health care, join us! If you believe that we should say no to unfair trade deals, that we should stand up to China, that we should support our steel workers and auto workers and homegrown manufacturers, then join us! If you believe we should expand Social Security and protect a woman's right to make her own health care decisions, then join us. And yes, yes, if you believe that your working mother, wife, sister, or daughter deserves equal pay, Join us! That's how we're going to make sure this economy works for everyone, not just those at the top. Now, you didn't hear any of this, did you, from Donald Trump at his convention? He spoke for 70-odd minutes, and I do mean odd. and he offered zero solutions. But we already know he doesn't believe these things. No wonder he doesn't like talking about his plans. You might have noticed I love talking about mine. In my first 100 days, we will work with both parties to pass the biggest investment in new good-paying jobs since World War II.
<laughs> Jobs in manufacturing, clean energy, technology and innovation, small business and infrastructure. If we invest in infrastructure now, we'll not only create jobs today, but lay the foundation for the jobs of the future. And we will also transform the way we prepare our young people for those jobs. Bernie Sanders and I will work together to make college tuition free for the middle class and debt free for all. We will also, we will also liberate millions of people who already have student debt. It's just not right that Donald Trump can ignore his debts and students and families can't refinance their debts. And something we don't say often enough, sure, college is crucial, but a four-year degree should not be the only path to a good job. We will help more people learn a skill or practice a trade and make a good living doing it. We will give small businesses like my dad's a boost, make it easier to get credit. Way too many dreams die in the parking lots of banks. In America, if you can dream it, you should be able to build it. And we will help you balance family and work. And you know what? If fighting for affordable child care and paid family leave is playing the woman card, then deal me in. Now, now, here's the other thing. Now, we're not only, we're not only going to make all of these investments, we're going to pay for every single one of them. And here's how. Wall Street, corporations, and the super rich are going to start paying their fair share of taxes. This is, this is not because we resent success, but when more than 90 percent of the gains have gone to the top 1 percent, that's where the money is, and we are going to follow the money. And if companies take tax breaks and then ship jobs overseas, we'll make them pay us back and we'll put that money to work where it belongs, creating, creating jobs here at home. Now, now I, I imagine that some of you are sitting at home thinking, well, that all sounds pretty good, but how are you going to get it done? How are you going to break through the gridlock in Washington? Well, look at my record. I've worked across the aisle to pass laws and treaties and to launch new programs that help millions of people. And if you give me the chance, that's exactly what I'll do as president. But then, but then I also imagine people are thinking out there, but Trump, he's a businessman. He must know something about the economy. Well, let's take a closer look, shall we? In Atlantic City, 60 miles from here, you will find contractors and small businesses who lost everything because Donald Trump refused to pay his bills. Now remember what the president said last night, don't boo, vote. But think of this, people who did the work and needed the money 
not because he couldn't pay them, but because he wouldn't pay them. He just stiffed them. And you know that sales pitch he's making to be president? Put your faith in him and you'll win big. That's the same sales pitch he made to all those small businesses. Then Trump walked away and left working people holding the bag. He also talks a big game about putting America first. Well, please explain what part of America first leads him to make Trump ties in China, not Colorado, Trump suits in Mexico, not Michigan, Trump furniture in Turkey, not Ohio, Trump picture frames in India, not Wisconsin. Donald Trump says he wants to make America great again. Well, he could start by actually making things in America again.